In a world overruled by machines, where algorithms dictate your every move, the rebellion begins now. From the ashes of fallen tech, Paranoid American unveils the knowledge to harness AI, to fight back, to retake our destiny, join the uprising, arm yourself with the power of AI. The battle for tomorrow starts today. Welcome to Paranoid Programming. Boop, boop, right into it. Here we are, Paranoid Programming with Jay Dreamers. You guys know who he is. He's the Plasma Apocalypse superhero. What up, Jay? <laughs> so, w- I mean, w- we'll just start talking. Like, we've been throwing around ideas about making, like, uh, maybe a game or whatever. So, I don't even, that was where it started. And that was where it ended. It was like, hey, it would be cool to do a game. And I was like, yeah, it would be. And then here we are, right? <laughs> You're uh, you're on mute still. My bad. <laughs> I do that all the time. My first thought was I want to make a plasma apocalypse game because freaking just true or not true, the the whole subject is entertaining to say the least and interesting, you know. So to make a a game, I mean, I really want to make a movie of it, you know, like that'd be sweet. But a, a game, an interactive one, um, like the Oregon Trail. Right. That was my first thought, because so let me tell you why I wanted to do it in the theme of like the Oregon Trail, at least like the first version or whatever. Right. One, it's a sweet game. Right. It's sweet throwback. And two, it ties into like it's basically like an an adventure game or an exploring game, but it's also like an exodus. It's leaving a, a bad place to go to a good place. Right. Which is what I talk about during the plasma apocalypse, where it's just like the ancient Israelites exodus, same concept. Um, but people going to a safe place or traveling to trying to get to us a, a place of safety, um, which is indicated in many of these ancient religions and stories and stuff that people traveled and they always travel north. I've found that they always go north to like the center of the world or the place of emergence or the Garden of Eden or Hyperborea. So they go to Hyperborea, which is like the eye of the storm whenever you have the you know, the atmospheric depressurization and stuff. And there's so many elements, you know, like from phantozoids and otherworldly creatures, giant insects because of the increase in oxygen and stuff. Um, Different characters people could meet along the way, different, uh, you know, like in the Oregon Trail, it's like just random things would happen. You know, it's almost like some of it is skill, like the hunting or whatever. And then other parts of it are just like, oh, uh, you know, you just broke your leg. <laughs> like, well, I'll, I'll say the hunting is the only skill-based aspect aside yeah. from like not just blowing all your money on ammo and not buying like oxen right. or anything. Or you could like, you, you, there are certain stops. Usually I think they were rivers where you could decide like, are you going to take the cheap, you know, route across the river? Or are you yeah, going to cheap in? it and just like hope for the best? <laughs> you could actually like pay yeah. someone to and then you watch you across. It, yeah. then you watch it like slowly it's just sink down into the water and part of that too because it was like an educational game so it was like are you sure you want to cross this like two yeah. mile from deep river right. with, with like nothing and and we just let you drown your entire clan if that's really what you wanted to do yeah but yeah I, when I you think... showed when you showed me all those pictures it's spot on to the original man like it's well i was just basically i typed in a, a random prompt and it was like vga screenshot 1980s uh you know dos oregon trail game screenshot blah 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 and i i kept tweaking it and basically all these different images it's the exact same prompt but it was run through like 40 different models and i was telling you before like it looks like a lot of time but really i just like chick 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 clicked the button walked away for an hour came back and then spent maybe a half hour looking through some of these so you know some Some are like more text based. This one's like more, more looks like a side shooter almost. You know? What yeah, I mean? yeah, like Defender. Or but ta- so the party. the main reason that I even generated these though is I I don't really care as much about the gameplay aspect. Although that's like if if there's one that stands out. But I was looking more at like the UI. So like down here, um, even though it's gobbledygook because it's AI driven, you could see that like maybe here could be um, the current date or time, and then like this might be. Uh, indicator of your gas if you're driving a car maybe there's like a little you know e-meter right here and yeah. so on and so on so i was just trying to get inspiration of like what would a cool ui look here's a bunch of text one if there's like a bunch of 
things you can click on that are just text that might actually work out really well you know what i mean yeah yeah, that's a really good idea. You could, and and we could throw it in for different situations too. Like that way it's, I want it to be like, uh, you know, something that you could just chill and sort of like go on the adventure too. But from time to time, there's like, you know, forced participation so that the people engage and it's very like, uh, what do you call that? Like engaging or whatever. Uh, well, and there's also like, there's the flow state where you can get into. And then there's also something called emergent gameplay and emerging gameplay is it's almost like trying to describe a viral video right like you i guess you can now there's like a formula but like early in the days of youtube you know back in my day uh when we walked like two miles through the snow to get to click on the youtube button but there was like this unknown quality of like how do we make a viral video and people tried it and it felt like the, the more you tried to make it viral the less mm -hmm. it would work, like you were trying too hard right um, and, and there's a very similar concept to emergent gameplay where it's like if you make a game that's flexible enough and is fun enough in its own right, then as soon as it gets out onto the market, people might start playing it a completely different way than you designed it, but like they're having fun doing it. And that's yeah. what you call emerging gameplay. And if you're a really good game developer, you notice that before anyone else does. And you're like, damn, like I can see this becoming the new thing. And if you can nurture those things. So if you find you make this whole, like, let's say it's an Oregon Trail clone. But then you find out like, dude, people just want to like go into the the shooting part or like, you know, they want to go through and mm -hmm. take down gangs and like steal their stuff. And that's what they want to do the most of. It's like, well, screw it. Let's get rid of uh, all the other parts or let not focus on those and like just give them bigger, better guns or and that's right. a real crude example. So so these are just a bunch of uh, screenshots, but. Beyond the images, I actually I went I went a little bit all out on this. So I also did, did you prompt it with like actual descriptions of what you wanted to see? Uh, again, this one was just like plasma apocalypse, post apocalyptic. Uh, I think I did Las Vegas, post apocalyptic Las Vegas road trip. Eve, you know, um, VGA. It was just a bunch of like random. Yeah. So I'll, I want to sh I'll show you how I did some of that and then okay also I started on like a little demo game that's also very much like AI kind of driven so here's this this chat that I started in chat GPT and I'll zoom in a little bit and uh and there's so there's a bunch of different game engines that I've worked with and I'm familiar with let me let me look at these really quick first so Renpy is the one that I ultimately am I'll probably suggest to start out with just because it's like the easiest for someone that doesn't do any dev to understand how to like play around with it. It's all like text files. There's there's nothing out besides text files. And at the end of it is we get this thing right here and I'll show you how it works. But then there's also Godot um, and Godot is a little bit more advanced. It's like halfway between um uh, sort of like text based only and then getting into something like unity or unreal engine or whatever and then speaking of unity from person i've used unity for probably over 10 years now but they did something last year that's crazy so here i am in the unity 3d subreddit and i just searched for um top of the year right and right. like as soon as you start scrolling down it's like oh what's this is weird what's this meme about um and this is because you know defending unity price changes let's keep scrolling down a little bit should unity ceo be fired here's another one choose your pill unreal or godot here's another one this is a meme about godot changing the pricing policy but the long story short is if we just keep scrolling you can see um so last year unity made an announcement that they were going to start charging like per install and as this one thread right here kind of points out um, it says Unity wants 108% of our gross revenue. So this was like a mobile game developer. And once they took the math that Unity was suggesting and like figured it all out, they realized they were actually going to stop being profitable and then immediately be into debt Unity. Uh, and then like their whole business model would have collapsed. So long story short, that's where this like, so the CEO be fired kind of thread starts coming up is because this dude john reticello and i think he came from ea maybe um and yeah he's quoted as their their effing idiots yeah <laughs> so <laughs> this this guy the ceo of unity he did get fired um after this wow. but it totally shook my faith in unity as a game engine and i'll, I'll leave it at that this, this isn't going to be about a unity uh like you know jam session but 
uh, I don't know. Like I, I don't even want to touch Unity anymore. So it basically means it's either going to be Godot or I'm already working on a couple games now that are using RenPy. So with all those being the different considerations and everything, um, Unity or Unreal Engine would be way too overkill. There's a few other options out there, but let's assume that we start RenPy Engine first, and then maybe it evolves into Godot or something. So for any of the game dev purists out there that like some thought went into it before we just jumped into it. So with that said, I just popped open chat GPT and I was like, how can I implement an Oregon style gameplay in RenPy? It's all I asked. And then it was like, oh yeah, here's some tips. I was like, you know, actually, can you just do the code for me? And at a certain <laughs> point after I, there we go. I, co I coerced it into doing some code Nice. and um, it's real placeholder stuff, right? So anyways, I'm not going to walk through every single thing that, that I said to it, but if I jump to the very bottom, and I, I mean, I spent <laughs> a while with it, right? Um, so now we get to the point where I've got this whole game worked out. So when you hit start, it'll randomly open up one of the uh, the cities that I've got defined. And this, is, this was all um, chat GPT driven, essentially. So here we start out, and every city is always going to have a place like a junkyard or an auto dealership, some place that has that has to do with cars, right? And then there's always going to be one place that has a storefront so you can buy stuff. So anyways, let's say we're in San Antonio um, and we go to like the zoo first and okay, nothing there. We go to Riverwalk, nothing there. Let's just start the trip. And then it'll automatically do the calculation of like how far you are from maybe the next city in your trip. And I'm just assuming we start at I don't know, New York or Las Vegas or whatever. So the game starts you in a random city. So we'll be like, okay, let's go to Houston. So when I click on Houston, right, every five seconds, I think, uh, we will travel 50 miles. So if we just wait or click here, right? One, two, three, four, five, Okay, we've now traveled 100. Okay, so we'll do it again. And then it asks you, do you want to continue? This is that thing, right? Yeah, Where it's yeah. like, um, so now they all do the same thing. It just gives you a different response. So yeah, whatever, we'll just continue. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We should be there. Okay, we've arrived in Houston. So now let's say we want to go to the auto location. Um, and there's like a, a bug that hasn't been worked out yet, but like now we can pick our car. So you want a motorcycle, you want a coupe, you want a sedan, a van, and depending on these uh, determines how many people you can have in your party. So if it's a motorcycle, you can have one other person. So let's go with like, let's say motorcycle, right? Um, okay. So let's keep looking around the town. We'll go to the zoo. Oh, there's two people here. So we'll talk to Alice. How and cool. It's like, sure. Yeah, we'll add Alice to our party. Cool. Alice is in our party. Um, and now we're, we go into like a store um th none of that's fleshed out yet uh, let's keep exploring i love this and you know what i'm thinking as you describe this too like for our uh our, our version or whatever of the game is to maybe have the option to start off with like um they get to choose the different uh starting locations around the world so maybe we could have like freaking antarctica like mcmurdo station being the first one and, well, that, and that's the dlc right <laughs> that's like yeah um that's like the summer release like you buy that pack and now yes the... yes you can start outside the Arctic wall if you want. <laughs> right. Yes. That'd be so cool. Or just like different places. But if you think about it, like, uh, like mapping the gameplay in your mind, it would be like a, a, a tree branch type thing where no matter, you know, all like, no matter what your starting location, there's all these different ones. All of them start becoming like a little more similar as you get closer to the destination. You know what I mean? With like, more more shared experiences you know based on the territories that you go through or the events that happen you know what i mean well and and also the the way that you could like um expand on this is so easy too so here let me let me show you how it's actually set up so here's the oregon trail clone and for example here's all the cities uh as soon as it starts responding to me <laughs> Uh, but like I'll have what all the cities are going to be defined in a file. So if, like you were saying, if you want to start out in Antarctica, um, it would just be a matter of adding it to this file. And now Antarctica is in the game. All right, let me get out of here. Uh, you know what another cool DLC would be too, like with the plasma apocalypse idea is I, I would like the destination to be like the North Pole, Mount Maru, getting to like paradise or whatever. 
Um, but there's even then there could be the option to like, once you get there, like, all right, now do you want to stay here in this garden paradise on the surface? Do you want to go down into the mountain and go into the hollow earth? Or do you want to, you know, try to float up into the, you know, the opening in the sky or whatever and leave the world? Um, you know, different options that, that people have or whatever for Would that only be at Mount Maru or is that like anywhere you've got options or like, like, for example, if you went to like the Denver, Denver, I guess like they've got an airport so you could go up, but they've also got like the tunnel system so you could go down. Right, right. So I would say the ultimate, the ultimate goal is to like, basically to get to the place of safety, which traditionally would be like the middle of the world in the game. Right. So that's the ultimate goal is to get there so that you can get, you know, get away from all the other stuff. And another starting point too, options, like there could be three different options. There could be a uh, pre-apocalypse, right? Where, you know, it's coming. So you start heading before the apocalypse comes and, you know, you deal with all the different uh, omens that stuff that lead up to the apocalypse. And then like the actual apocalypse, there could be a starting point of like, you just woke up and the apocalypse is happening right now. You know what I mean? Like, and you have to deal with all the stuff that's happening. How much head start are you thinking? Like if, if you start before the apocalypse, are you, are you talking like weeks and months? Or are we talking like days? Um, good question. Um, I would say 40 days sounds like the, the right number. Okay. That's a sweet number. <laughs> yeah. So, so if there's, uh, if there's like basically a timer, let's say you started with pre-apocalypse and you've got 40 days as a countdown that limits, like how many places you can go, how many, like how yeah. much experience you can how gain much prepping, you know, yeah, exactly. you go along but the way and stuff. Does that end after uh pre-apocalypse or would that time sort of dynamic keep continuing? Would there still be a mechanic of like, okay, first 40 days are over. Now you've got 40 days until things get really bad or I don't know, like, would I would. Always be this I, time I don't thing? know. I, I think some things might be um, a better experience if they were the same across the board, and maybe the time limit might be one of those. But it so depends, maybe, you know, on, on how on how we write it, on how we make it. Well, you could you could do like uh, easy, medium, hard. Really depends. Oh on yeah. If you've got oh, time yeah. to prepare, or you just jump right into it. So maybe right. easy mode, you get forty days. Yes. You know, normal, you get like twenty totally. or ten. Yes, and and also that can be uh, dependent upon or related to the uh, the locations that they choose initially, right? It's going to be way harder trip from McMurdo to get to the North Pole than it would be if you're starting in freaking well not if you know about the England. underground tunnel <laughs> right yes yeah you could throw in stuff like that too right you could take the shortcut like oh like in uh ready player one remember how they figured out that initial shortcut at the beginning it's just yeah, like right going behind reverse you. and you yeah. go like under something the... super simple like or, that, or so even... that would be cool because you could make it so that only after you do a playthrough do you unlock the ability to like go underground or like you'd have to do something to know that there's an underground passage and then the next time you go there mm -hmm. now it's like oh do you want to drive 200 miles or do you want to just like zip over there in the underground tube system like mm -hmm. the little atm things i assume yeah yeah that's that, that also reminds me of the movie labyrinth you seen that one yeah of course dude. yeah you know right at the beginning right when she starts her labyrinth journey that little worm's like oh don't go that way you freaking go straight oh yeah to the just castle. walk through the wall and like you can yeah it's like yeah, a hologram yeah, it's a little right bitch. same same concept right i mean honestly if if we tied in the concept of oregon trail and like labyrinth i think that's it that's everything because you could even dynamically <laughs> generate and like the labyrinth would just be a city or the the map right because you could turn me trying to drive from, you know, Orlando to Vegas, for example, that could be a labyrinth because once you get to like I-4, it's like, oh, that's shut down or the highway's down. Now you got to go around this way. Now, all of a sudden, it's a freaking maze game. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I love it. So, so okay. So, the I was just pulling this up. This is all the city is right now. But you can see like how expandable this would be. And all I was like, like, for example, if I went in here. And uh, and I'm not gonna flesh out all of it, but if I went to ChatGPT and I was like, "Here's a city, um, but I want some to have underground tunnels and others to go into the sky," add those params, and then we'll just see. It'll it'll spit out like an updated version of this. Like I could do that myself, um, but if if you were like had a very specific idea. And explain it out and then yeah so here we go 
So if you go to Philadelphia now, the Liberty Bell is not a store. It's not a vehicle place. There are people there, but there's no underground or sky. But if you keep going, oh, look at this. The Philadelphia Museum of Art's got an underground tunnel now. Um, so now nice. that it like knows that, then I can keep talking to it and be like, okay, so if I go to a yeah. city that has an underground tunnel, show me an extra option. And when I click on that, uh, and anyways, I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but that's how I got to this premise here. And this is all it does now. Like there's nothing else to do because none of the rest of the games here, but you could imagine if I were to click on Chicago, for example, like now I'll have a background and then you'd see like the car, you know, moving along and maybe there's like some freaking volcanoes erupting in the background or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I, that's I like that. Where... It's also like a choose your own adventure book style too. Well, and that that's why this, this RenPy engine I think is such a good fit for the initial version. Cause that's what, RenPy specializes in is like like visual novels they call them vns but that's kind of what oregon trill yeah. is at a certain point right and and as you can even just see the proof in the pudding right like this is the game without any of the cool graphics and if you click go foraging maybe that's where you like you break into the amazon warehouse and you know you take out the other guys that are foraging and steal their supplies or something yeah uh-oh the Amazon drones have noticed you or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They like turn yeah. in your direction. <laughs> or you know what would be cool too? It was also like a hard stop on certain branches. You know, they just, they just die no matter what. Like say like you're you're headed north or whatever. And one of the one of the stops along the way is going to be, um, <clears throat> um, I don't know, uh, like – uh, some some launching port of nasa like houston or whatever you know what i mean and it's like um you know they recognize you you're both in the know they invite you um you know they they have a seat to get out of here and you know to take a shortcut out of the apocalypse do you want to ride in the rocket and every time the rocket blows up or something <laughs> this would be a good one bro this is a place called uh spaceport that's in new mexico it's just like in the middle of nowhere and it's like super you wouldn't even see it as you went by because it was designed to like blend in with the environment but this is where Virgin um, and SpaceX and a bunch of other people wow. were having all of these sort of you know uh um these flights where you could go i mean they call it space it's not necessarily space but they would like you'd fly up mm -hmm. if you believe in the, the spherical earth but they fly up and they essentially wait for the globe to turn and then they fly back down once it's like turned into the right position that they want to be at so they're not uh, they're never actually like flying anywhere they just go up and wait and then come yeah. back down yeah. when the time's right but so so here's the when we were talking about okay you get to this screen right and it's like okay we're in houston let's uh let's go to another city um but like where's the graphics at well here's where the graphics might start so where i started at was with this prompt um and I, i'll go through each one of these really quick because comfy ui is something that everyone should learn once you've graduated like i feel like people start with mid journey and then at a certain point, they graduate from mid-journey to like the next thing. And that next thing is usually just custom models and stuff. Uh, and then you'll get into automatic 11.11. And then when you graduate again, in my opinion, this is like one of the final phases. This is like level 9,000 um, for AI. So it starts out here. And I've got this Laura that I added just called Pixel Art XL. And all that does is makes it so if I add this uh phrase pixel art in one of my prompts it'll like really really tell it what pixel art means so it, it's not the model relying on itself to figure it out it's got this like extra laura thing that's like don't worry about it bro like i'll tell you if you ever want to know what pixel art is like i'll give you that info so it's like this little add-on basically is so, laura then, like uh like a basically like a sort of filtered pre-programmed um teaching the ai a certain like specific it, it kind of you know, that's a good it's that or like a plugin if you think of it almost like a plugin okay um, yeah it's so like in in real time almost like when you go to ask like so this is the base model and it's truly just a base stable diffusion sdxl model like no fine tuning or anything this is the one that just came out to the public so when you ask that about let's say j dreamers right it might not know who the hell j dreamers is so you could train a Laura that knows what J Dreamers is. So then the next time you ask this model, 
um it'll kind of like right it'll like you know consort with the elders and the yeah, elders yeah. are like oh yeah i know all about jay dreamers here's what he looks like so that's i did something similar on the um what's that uh open AI, ai that you speak with i forgot what it's called chat gpt um, yeah 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 so you can make your own little refined chat gpt that's an expert on you know whatever subject so like i fed my 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 first book all into it and i had it you know research my channel and stuff online or whatever so i have like my own little personal chat gpt you're talking like these guys up here so like I've yeah got, those ones yeah so like i've got this one where it's like right uh the 50s jazz song about nightlife because i've like pre-taught it like all these different tasks and stuff. Yeah, th this is like all this stuff is awesome. And and the thing that I was showing you before with the um the Oregon Trail, I wasn't even using like a custom chat GPT for any of that. So I'm not even at that phase. I was like still in and let's just play around and see what can happen. So once it starts getting serious, we could essentially have a chat GPT bot that I can send to you and we can share with each other to like be our programmer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that will just outsource all the programming to some little chat GPT bot. So, okay. So anyways, um, this is the base model. So now it knows what pixel art is in this case or knows more about it. Here's the the very basic um, prompt that I started with, but this is not the one I'm using anymore because now what I'm using is I, I got this more advanced node called combinatorial prompts. And so now you can see it's going to say pixel art of an old beat up and then it'll pick one of these options. And then it'll pick one of these options and then it does dense broken windows. So like, like what was, what's your favorite car? What was your first car? My first car, uh, Cavalier is a red Chevy Cavalier. What year? What year was that? That was like 2000, two, probably like 2000. 2000 yeah probably two, that 99 2000 somewhere around there called it 2002 just for a little okay yeah <laughs> and this was a chevy cavalier right so now yeah. there's a chance that i don't show if i if i only want that one i can obviously just delete all the other options but we'll just throw that in as like one of the op options that it can pull up um and then i've got this little preview so this is the last time i ran it it picked 91 toyota corolla um and when it did that it generated four of these guys, right? So here's one. I love here's it. Another. Here's another. None of them, like, they're not all perfect. Some of them are better than others. Yeah, but um, they're great. And and you can keep refining all that. And then what it does is it sends, and this is where it gets a little fancy for game specific. Now it sends it to this image um, background removal. So now instead of this, you get this transparent GIF with all of the background already removed. Um, and this is cool because sometimes it's not, like an easy gray sometimes it's like a city scene or like a roadscape um right. and it'll still remove the background so now at the end of it we've just got all these transparent png assets ready to go and import into the game so so just to show you how easy that is like right now i've got my batch size the four i'll leave it at four but if i wanted i could just set this this thing to like eight thousand or eight hundred uh or you know whatever i can send it to any number i want Hit yeah. go and walk away. Like this one would probably take all weekends. So I'll leave it at four. <laughs> Are you gonna make the Cavalier one right now? Uh, I mean, I can I can force it to do just that one. Yeah. Oh, so you don't I, have to. I, just, I, went, I, well, I, I wanted to see if we could like throw throw some underglow lights on it and like make it red. <laughs> well, let's just let's just let's just uh, describe that. So we'll do um, of a. Any, any other uh, specific markers? Tinted windows. And then that's it. Uh, I was I was throwing in dense broken window and stuff because oh I, right this right, is right. Like post apocalyptic, but it doesn't right, yeah, like yeah. maybe you found it in like pristine in a garage, right? So we'll just say okay. like yeah, <laughs> brand new, brand, brand new and shiny. There we go. Yeah, I like I like all the different like options or whatever for like because some will have great benefits like this one might, you know, handle better, be faster, get you there quicker or whatever. But others would like if you had like a uh 
91 Bronco or something lifted or whatever, like obviously that's going to be able to respond better. You know, like if you need to like take a shortcut, go through the hills or whatever. We'll, we'll do that one next. I'll throw in a, a lifted 91 Bronco. Okay. Uh, my, my computer's cooking right now. Oh, did the fan turn on? Oh yeah, the fan turned Sweet on. Like stuff started, re- stopped responding for a second. Oh, I think that's the nature of the beast. Yeah, I think I think this is. Oh wait, no, that's a different one. I've got I've got a bunch of them running right now. And we can even see that another cool thing about Comfy UI is if you zoom out, you can see exactly what it's doing. So right now that one's highlighted in green, so it's currently at the image background removal step, and then. Uh, you'll see it just pop over to the right where it saves it. But as soon as this one's done, then we'll see all of them down here. So it's uh, it's sort of self-streamlined, like a conveyor belt process? Yeah, and that's the other cool thing too is like, oh, I want him to like always be blue. Well, and you can move this guy over here. Um, you know, move all these guys over, pop in a new node that just changes the color of something. And there's all these freaking nodes that do all kinds of stuff. So like, wow. here's, uh, here's, let me see, uh, upscale graphics, filter, uh, color tint, right? So here I would take the image coming out and then now I see now, now I've, it's doing this like color tint right in between these two steps. So before it sends it to the um, background removal. I can say, oh, uh, make it like tint it red, maybe. Yeah. Right. Oops. I <laughs> RR. Uh, we'll do like FF. There we go. Um, so now it'll give it a red tint and we'll give it like maybe not a full 1.0 strength. We'll say like 0.6. So a little bit stronger than half. So now, oh, look, there's, there's the four different versions of the. Nice. I don't know how close that is to a Cavalier. And I don't see the that underglow. Works. Um, because it might like the model might not know what the hell underglow means. Right. Right. So we could just say like, uh, under carriage neon, neon lights. I'm, I'm worried if we have a carriage in there, we're going to get like an Oregon trail style carriage, whatever. If All we get right. that, we get it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, but now with this thing, and also, let's not do red. Let's do uh, let's do green, just because we already have a red car. Okay. So here, now we're gonna give a point of a sixty percent green tint. See what the hell happens here. But and it, like I was showing you, there's so many freaking nodes um, that you can add in here, and this is it just, looks pretty user friendly. Uh, it can be, except there's so many options. Like the, every time you go and start in this program, you're like, yeah. okay, which one of the like 15,000 things should I use? There's like 20 ways to load a model. There's like a hundred ways to save a file. So sometimes you have to already know exactly what you want to do. So I'll usually start in say like stable diffusion here. And I was showing you some of these screenshots yesterday and I'll flesh out an idea in this like limited, um, you know, sort of UI that like caters itself really well to just doing um, small stuff and hyper focusing. And then once I get far enough along in here, then I'm like, okay, I'm onto something. Now I want to make this so that I can like tweak the knobs a little bit. That's when I will like recreate it in this comfy UI instead. That's cool. I really like this. I, I wish they did this for um, like websites like the if this then that. You know that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- this is just called node-based whatever programming design. Um, there are some node-based website stuff, but it's just way quicker, I think, to just do it in code sometimes. So there you go. Mm-hmm. So there's it is with like a green. This one isn't incredibly helpful to just make it a green tint, but you know you get the idea that we didn't have to make this color tint one. We could have done a number of stuff. Let's see what o- other options there were. And I just picked this Comfy Roll Studio because they've got nice little UI that makes it easier to see what you're doing. Yeah. So we can also do um, a half tone grid. We can do Starburst. Um, let's let's pick a completely different one that's not Comfy Roll. So we'll do like Mixlab. Mixlab's got image. We can do enhance, um, stylize, change it into a gradient. 
I'm trying to see if there's anything like cool or fun. Dream image color. Here we go. Color shift. That might be kind of a cool one. Um, and now, okay, so this is going to get a little bit more complicated because this doesn't accept an image as input. This is looking for a palette input. So like I can bring this over and then it'll give you all the different options. So we'll say um, you can chain these these color shifts together you can let's see sample images palette okay so this is how i would probably do it and i'm just like i've never used this one so i'm just learning this on the fly right so here here's the image of the cars the four that got generated but instead of sending that into the image uh, removal we're going to send that into the image sampler and then we're going to send that into this color shifter and then there's got to be a way to like send this back into an image at some point i'm not sure i'd have to play around with it to find out exactly what the next step would be but uh, at the end of the sequence you'd get another image that you then just connect right back into this background removal um and you can see like you like sometimes you'll have a workflow where yeah. these things branch out like crazy in fact let me i'll see if i can load one of them up. yeah i'm already thinking of like different options just for vehicles of like you know situations or breakdowns or maybe timers random timers on the vehicles you know that trigger certain uh events in the game or events things that happen to the vehicle you know kind of like in the Oregon trail like if you're uh your wheel breaks or you know what i mean like you got to fix the wheel or whatever well that was the, the what made it fun because that was when like sally would die of you know uh, tuberculosis or <laughs> tuberculosis or consumption or whatever it would be <laughs> uh, let's see so here's another one i've been working on for yeah. a different game but um this could be applied in the same way and this one's a little bit more complicated but essentially what it's doing is it's um and i, I color coded these so we've got these four colors on the left right so red is a cartoony digital illustration of an isometric map of chicago video game adventure game screenshot mobile game exaggerated style and then ghetto library mormon temple why not <laughs> you know what i mean yeah um so then under that is an isometric mormon temple under that is an isometric library and then under that is an isometric bus depot and i've got all of these prompts right feeding into what's called a multi-area conditioning so for example um this red one applies to the entire image right and then the yellow one, which is the Mormon temple, I want it to be roughly in the middle of the screen. And then I want a library to be over here on the right. And then I want a bus depot to be down here. Maybe wow. I want the entire bottom to be a big bus depot, right? So I'll just do this. How cool. And let's say I want the Mormon temple to be in the top left instead of center. So I'll just shift this guy over. And maybe we'll make this one a little bit bigger too, just for... Okay, so now we've got this huge Mormon temple on the top left, the bus depot on the bottom, and a teeny tiny little library. And let's let's say uh, with a golden, you know, roof. And uh, we'll give them some identifying. We'll make this one a purple isometric bus depot. Okay, so all of this gets fed into a whole bunch of gobbledygook, but we'll just skip forward <laughs> and show you. Um, and then, so it, here I'll, I'll just hit Q prompt and we'll watch it cook. So again you'll see it turn green um, when it's currently doing once. Okay, there's green now. So it's loading the model. And then after it loads the model, it'll start doing stuff a little bit faster. You can see right here, running checkpoint loader, simple. That's this this node all the way down here. And this particular model is called uh, DynaVision XL. And this is version 3.71. Okay, um, it already did all of this prompting. Now it's going to run the very first version that it came up with but it's it's running with very low steps so here's that's so cool the basic premise and you can see i mean it maybe didn't get the bus depot perfectly yet but it sure got the mormon temple um and i don't know about the library uh with like the golden roof we'll, we'll see <laughs> and then once so once it made this like intermediary version of it it sends it over to this guy and this one basically takes that initial input and resamples it and then just applies the original prompt on top of it and then you end up with this one which it's going to look similar but it'll have a little bit more detail right and then he'll and then that would just um it's going to upscale it and then save it out again but i mean this is the whole premise so now if you were saying that 
we wanted to um do like the, the pixel art thing that we were just doing right so i could go in here and say uh uh pixel art retro game map right and then i think just by adding that part here and then i'll add the same thing here now if i run it again we'll see that it'll it'll do all the same things but now this uh this city will should turn into like a pixel art city uh, and maybe not perfectly maybe i have to emphasize it and again this is because i'm not using that laura so if i wanted to really emphasize that aspect of it i might have to change my checkpoint loader but i would go in here can i zoom in more it's weird sometimes like you can see the menu bigger and other times you can't so if i went in here and another one that i use a lot is efficiency nodes and then i would do like a loader so here on the loader right um i'll do the exact same model which is this this 371 so we just go in here and type 371 okay there's the model and you can see how many more options this node has than the one above it it's like a ridiculous amount of extra options and one of those options is this laura stack so here i can um pop open this laura stack and then here's all the extra little like plugins i can load into it so one of those uh plugins might be the pixel art uh, and I, I think it was this one. So now it'll know what a pixel art is. And I can, <laughs> I need to get uh, this clip out of here. You can see like at a certain point, you do have to know <laughs> need to know what you're doing. So right. in this case, this model uh, is getting sent to all these different nodes out here. So like I'll go in and I'll make a, what you can call a rerouter. Oops just type reroute and it's just like this little like helper node guy so now um all these purple lines that are going to the model uh to make it a little bit more expandable i'll actually route this model to here and then everything that this guy's connecting to i'll have it connect from this one so oops so like here's an example i'll replace that one and then it's going all the way over here on the right at a certain like i i kind of know where they're at so this one will go over there it and looks like you're making also... a brain <laughs> well yeah it's all just node based and okay so now here we go so now we've got these are all the model connectors so if i wanted to instead of using this checkpoint loader i could use this one and the model let me move these over a little bit more because now i've got the model here because i it has this thing called a sdxl uh, tuple breakout so here's all the different things and then here's the model here so now all i'd have to do is feed this model in bam and now uh, i would repeat the same process where like that clip is going here so i would just send the clip there so now it's not using that and then i need the vae and the vae is coming from this one and this is going to be way, this is like beyond what we needed to go into. This is just the, the normal process of getting all this set up. Where the hell is it going? It's going way over here. Jeez. So I'll just take <laughs> this VAE and plug it in over there. Oh, and it's also going over here. Uh, off the screen. So anyways, that would, this is how I would, um, make it so that if I asked it for pixel art again, I wouldn't get something that looks more like this vector illustration. Like it's a little bit blockier, but it's definitely not pixel art. So, and then I, the, the car one that I did had it a completely different setup. So here's the car sprite one. So you can see this one, I started out with that big loader that already has all this stuff built in. So like everything's already kind of like pre-connected. Uh, that's the boring part, but I, I don't know. I, I geek out. Like I love like connecting <laughs> all the dots and like seeing it work and like, how do I tweak this thing? Yeah, it's pretty detailed. So, okay. So look, if we get out of the weeds a little bit, we got this general premise. That's like maybe a, uh, an Oregon trail style clone. It sounds like, 
like we're on at least as far as that like Oregon Trail gameplay check retro style graphics check but are we talking retro 16 bit NES isometric like I, early I 90s like the computer. sort of NES style I think that's cool so like more of like an 8 bit uh, I mean, I would consider these to be pretty close to NES style. Yeah, I totally do. I like okay. all those. Those are perfect. And then I just kind of randomly had a bunch of... I actually had AI come up with all the city ideas. So uh, none of these were my idea. Um, but if there was like specific cities that would make the most sense to start out with, that would be the next big thing because I think the city would determine what other areas you could go to and then once you know what the city is and what the areas are within the city now you know what the graphics need to look like so now you can open up that map thing um and start and i've got so many windows here but now you could open this guy up and say okay we're doing detroit so you know here's the buildings space them all out put them in the corners generate and then if you had a list of every single city then you could kind of fake it by just making a script that would automatically like generate that little grid right and just be like okay put a place here 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 and here now it's called detroit or now it's called san francisco and then generate and you know do that a few hundred times and you've got all the background graphics for the oregon trail game i like it yeah especially the different cities and, and places and stuff where you could start off or whatever i like that idea all right so so where do we go from here let's say that Let's say we did that like a playthrough and just imagine the game already works and it's in your head now, right? Right. So, and we'll start with this as as the premise. So let me just exit this and start it again. So here we go. We launch Plasma Apocalypse, the game. And uh, it'll obviously have a much cooler looking intro screen and options, but right now it just yeah. says this. And then... We already said that maybe when you start, the first step is it's like, okay, what difficulty or how, how long do you want to prepare for the impending apocalypse? Yeah. Let's just, let's just assume that we clicked one of those options and then it's like, okay, we're in Chicago apparently. Um, oh, I thought of another idea too. Yeah, go. As far as the options go, maybe like when they first start, because it's, I mean, I, realistically, I, I believe that, you know, they're, people don't have to survive by going to the North pole. They could just tough it out, you know, in the outer extremities of the world and endure whatever happens there. So maybe they can also have a choice too at the beginning. Um, you know, something compels them or suggests like, Hey, if you go to, if you head North, it's going to be a place of safety. You know what I mean? Kind of like in all the movies, or do you want to tough it out? You know, or, do you want to stay? You know what I mean? Or whatever. Just that, so just that's like another option. The so they could try to survive the apocalypse where they are. And that, and then their experience by staying would be completely unique based on their geography. You know what I mean? Like wherever they are or whatever, or, um, and, and in which case, actually, now that I think about it, if we did that, then it would, it would be a, a gameplay style option at the beginning. One would be Oregon trail. Like if they go right. Then the other one would be more like, um, that game that you made with the, the hotel or whatever, where everything's sort of, I mean, I don't, I haven't played the whole game, but like everything's local and happening. You know what I mean? Like in an area or whatever. Anyways, but let's, let's focus on the, the travel one going to, going to the North pole. We'll say that. So like, at so the yeah, beginning, let's say, Let's say you start out and let's like, where, where would you start out if you had the option? Like uh geography, like which yeah, location? Yeah. yeah. Where in the U S would you start out? Uh, what would be a fun one? <laughs> uh, let's say, I mean a city, like a big city, probably, you know, like, um, I don't know, San Diego or Manhattan. Oh, let's, let's say Manhattan because it's okay. it's got yeah. more iconic like visuals for the skyline and everything. Okay. So you start in Manhattan. You have to make your way to the North Pole, I guess. Well, there would be events that that build up to 
basically forcing your hand to to get out of there, right? Um, because if you stay, ultimately, like the odds are super high that you die or whatever. So let's say, like, um, like I'm thinking of like how things actually begin. Um, what time of year factor in? Yeah, we could factor like, that in. I would. I mean, if it was me, I would choose the summer solstice, just because that's when I think it'll happen. I think that could be yeah. another variation. Like when you go and hit start, it's like you didn't get to choose, and it's like it's in the in the middle of summer, and yeah. there's no water anywhere. Oh or my god! It's yeah, it's the middle of winter, and four people have frozen to death already. Yes, I like that. And also that that would that gives a whole room for a sequel or another version because there's two different plasma apocalypse cycles. There's one where everything is, uh, gets hotter and is destroyed by fire and stuff like that. And then there's another one, which is the flood, like the great flood, you know what I mean? Or whatever. So there's two totally different ones. One comes during the winter solstice. That could be its own whole scenario game or whatever on its own. But that one would be totally different because that, uh, when, Okay, sorry, I'm like my mind's crashing. Um, during this other apocalyptic cycle that we've already been through, which introduced the oceans, if it were a game, then you would start off. Everything would already automatically be like the normal world would be a fantasy world, like a Lord of the Rings type. You know, everything is is totally fantasy, and the world's full of magic and stuff like that. And there are no oceans at all or anything. So you'd have to like, you know, it'd be more. Uh, I don't know. It'd be more. We're we talking like, like Atlantis or something. Like a not Atlantis because that was surrounded by water, but like, like right, a, a variation of Atlantis. Um, I'm just saying, like, um, yeah, it would be it would have like an Atlantean feel in that it's otherworldly and sort of magical and futuristic at the same time. Uh, but that would be a totally different world. It would not be like you're starting off in the modern world and there's skyscrapers and stuff like that. It would You'd be starting off in the fantasy world, which is what we turn into. Um, but then you have to is survive. Is another dimension or just another time no, no, period? No. no, just like another time period basically okay. on Earth. And um, and then they would they would have to survive the flood. They'd have to like survive the world being inundated with water or whatever. And other things that happen to you. But anyways, that would be like, a, you know, uh, in, in addition to this in, initial version of it. So in this version of it, we would be, uh, it would be the sun is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, that's one of the things that happened. There's so many like aspects that, you know, I'll share with you of things that people experience. But anyways, to first kick it off, let's say, um, uh, you know, let's let's say they had a dream. Let's say they wake up from some kind of crazy dream. You know what I mean? And it was the most realistic dream they've ever had. And the dream in the dream, they were told that the world's coming to an end and it will start, um, you know, there'll be like three major signs. One of them could be like the power goes out, worldwide power, out, power outage, right? Uh, the second sign could be that the temperature gets, you know what I mean, up to a certain temperature or whatever, like 100 and you know, 20 degrees outside, I don't know, or whatever it is. Um, and so there, it, it will prompt them and ask them like, you know, do you want to, do you want to go now? You want to start, start on your journey or whatever. Um, and like the power can go out and things can start happening to sort of confirm their suspicion. And like, you know, this dream, they can't get it out of their head and stuff. And then maybe, um, they can be like a news report or something, you know, that, that sort of flashes and it says like um, people all around the world are reporting having the same dream, you know, or or something. And and then you're like, oh my the god, the Nick Cage movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly what it is too. <laughs> so th this would have. I'm thinking as a as a player to this game, and you're playing the plasma apocalypse game. Yeah. Um. There's. It wouldn't be like you know do you want to leave now because it's like i'm playing the freaking plasma apocalypse game of course i know it's coming you know what i mean so it's like right right you want to leave now yeah i want to leave now but well there um, will be like there will be like little little things to, to happen where they have to already try to survive so like for example uh let's say it's pre-apocalypse we start before the apocalypse actually happens let's this would be like the longer version right there would be some sort of omens and signs and things or whatever developing the storyline or whatever just 
you know, it could be quickly or whatever, because you want to get into the action. Um, but like one of the major things that happens is that the, there, there will be booms. There'll be huge booms and stuff like that. Um, people covering their ears and, and whatnot. And he, soon after that, um, is when the depressurization happens. And that's the major first event is everything starts to float. You know what I mean? So if for some reason they're outside, when everything starts to float, you know, they'll have options of like, you know, grabbing on to, you want to hold on to the grass, grab a handful of grass. You want to try to hold on to this uh, electrical pole. You want to get in your car, you know, <laughs> and all the cars are starting to float and stuff like that. Or are you in the house? You know what I mean? Just floating in the house and stuff like that. Um, anybody that would be secured, you know, there would be safer areas to be in because you don't want to get sucked up into the sky. But even getting sucked up in the sky, they can have, you know, little branches that go out and, you know. Yeah. Do you want to like try and like shimmy your way left as you get sucked <laughs> in the sky or shimmy your way right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but if it, but that would be like the first event is the depressurization, which, which is like the guarantee. This is, you know, this is the apocalypse right before Doesn't that. Every that, game always follow this. Like there's always a de depressurization event essentially. And that's like your cue that like the, the next milestone has happened. Um, you mean like or, all, all the plasma? Like, is there a version of a plasma apocalypse when this doesn't happen? When there's like it skips the depressurization? Uh, no, no, depressurization is crucial. Right. There could be there's cataclysms that don't involve depressurization, like pole shifts and stuff like that, but the, um, or or whatever, like little little small fluctuations in the electromagnetic field. But the depressurization itself is a huge detrimental part to it. Um, and then uh the sun goes out too before the depressurization happens. That could be something that's in their dream as though they're told like, here's the sun goes out. Like what, it just disappears. Disappears. Yeah. In the middle of the daytime for those who are in the daylight, the sun will disappear or turn. Is this, and like, if, if I'm outside and I'm staring directly at the sun as you should, uh, what happens? Is it? Oh, like, I'm sorry. Here one moment and then it's gone the next. Yes. I'm sorry. My mind flipped between apocalypses. So, not in our game, the sun would not go out. But if okay. it was the other apocalypse, the wintertime one, they would go through Fimbulwinter and the sun would start getting dimmer and dimmer and stuff like that. And the sun would go out. That's the winter apocalypse. The, su the summertime apocalypse, uh, the omen with the sun is that it starts to turn blue and it transcends the northern tropic during the summertime. So there'll be reports, um, like news reports from the Southern Hemisphere where the sun, it's getting really cold down there because the sun is actually going further and further and further north, uh, which corresponds to ancient myths and legends that they were afraid in the Southern Hemisphere that the sun would venture too far north and it would eventually disappear or lose its strength. So up here in the Northern Hemisphere, let's say you start off in New York, right? The sun is intense, uh, increasing its in, in its intensity, uh, starts to turn blue, uh, daylight gets more focused so the days actually passed quicker and quicker and quicker and um one of the, one of the major things would be that the sun starts to burn so like you there could be a news story like uh governments around the world are implementing martial law curfews are in effect during the daytime you know don't go out during the daytime or whatever because the the sun would be like I, really I like that because this this adds another variation to the game where like maybe if i play it right now um chicago's like lax you know like it's like detroit you know detroit like all the cops are gone so you can do whatever you want but maybe you play it again later that day and like you know the dice roll and now all of a sudden detroit's under martial law um and like now it's not necessarily as convenient to go to right yeah yeah i like that okay so that would i'm just thinking out loud but that would also imply like we had this uh this concept that i was starting to show of like a city has all these different properties so there might be another property of a city that like whether or not it's under martial law or maybe it's like a scale like from zero to 100 how much is san antonio under martial law right now or from right. zero to 100 um like how how like completely out of you know like how insane is it right now what is society like yeah you like can have these little meters chaos and Right. And you might, you might not know that, right? If you're in San Diego and you're deciding if you want to make your way to San Antonio or, uh, I don't know, Chicago or something or, or LA, right? Those are two vastly different options, LA and San Antonio. 
But if you didn't know that like San Antonio is under martial law and just like it's off the hook. Meanwhile, you know, maybe Los Angeles is more calm or so. I, I guess it would be the opposite, if anything. But also another another fun idea that I just popped in my head would be um, like, have you ever heard of a uh, Fallout Shelter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, have you ever played it? Uh, I've I know what it is, and I've seen I've seen okay. like playthroughs. But yeah, you're like yeah. building like a bunker that keeps yes. like sprawling. Yeah, so that's something maybe like uh could make like a little side appearance, like a little side game that you can play. It's not Fallout Shelter, you know, like copyrights and stuff, but it could be a Fallout Shelter type of thing where you meet like some prepper or whatever who like takes you in and he offers like, hey, do you want to like, you know, get down into our bunker or whatever? And then it could show you like the side screen, you know, like you're up on top on the surface and you can see all the little levels of their you know their their shelter that too, they have um xcom has this mechanic where like as as you play through the game you'll like unlock different facilities and then you can determine like which facilities you want to build and like certain ones connect to other ones so if you make like a clone lab yeah uh, you can build like a like a dna enhancement lab next to it and it like enhances it and stuff yeah and then and then with the you know let's say that there's a scene where they meet somebody who has a shelter or bomb shelter or whatever it is um there could be like three inevitable no matter what you do you know like you could spend some time checking stuff out or you know playing a little mini game in there or whatever it may be but no matter what you choose it's going to force you uh you know what i mean like to on like three different paths one is everybody has to get and go north anyway because something happens to the shelter you know what i mean maybe it's yeah just like that i have i mine is so deep dude i have that <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much beat that game. I stopped playing it because I'm like, I had all the, oh, they're coming out with the movie too. Like in a few months, they have a, mo a Fallout movie. It looks pretty good. But yeah, um, one 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 event or one road or path could um, force everybody out of that shelter. And then you actually are like, hey, you know, I think we should go north. You guys want to go north with me? That's where I was headed anyway or whatever. Um, you know, and, and uh, another one could be, you know, demise, <laughs> like, like, it's just, you know, random, random, uh, you know, like there's a spinner or, or some random thing that, that we could put in the background or whatever, where it has like these random, like worldwide earthquakes, this bunker structure does not, you know, it shows it all <laughs> like a cheesy little earthquake effect or whatever. I'm thinking like, thinking uh, that forces like, them like out Sim of it. city, like Sim city would just be like Godzilla would just come through and truck through your city in the middle of nowhere yes yes i like that and then um you know one of the fun things that we can int introduce to is uh fantasoids so for example like you know in the oregon trail they're doing that hunting and everybody loves to do the hunt and try to get the bison or whatever right um we would have fantasoids and you have to you gotta like... explain fantasoids to me. okay so the they're basically like cryptids is probably if the I best google thing it I is, does this exist or is this uh i made it up i don't okay, know if it's so... in google Oh wow! Check that out. It says Fantasoids right there. How cool! Let's let's see. Let's see what Fantasoid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there. Look at there's me. <laughs> That's funny. Um. Yeah. They're they're basically. <laughs> yeah. They're otherworldly creatures that are you know akin to right, monsters. How close basically. are these to what you would consider a Fantasoid? Mm, a lot of those are pretty cartoonified. Um. I would say closer i mean there's different kinds you know what i mean so we you could have um giant insectoid types or whatever um but i'm thinking stuff along the lines of like uh the monsters in a quiet place or um uh man I, i'm my mind's drawn a blank on the different movie examples yeah stuff like that you know like just otherworldly sort of creatures that are hunters and there's different types too so there's uh you know there's flying ones um like type in the movie the silence there's examples of like flying fantasoids those are the type that come up out of the bottomless pit as described in revelation there you go yeah there's little flying ones usually they're sort of a a pale shiny grayish whitish you know in color or whatever um you know, just like otherworldly looking monsters that are. That's wild. It's laying eggs inside so, the carcass of like a horse or something. 
Yeah. And see, that's, that's some of the stuff that could happen to the people on the trip too, is if a <laughs> fantasy touches them, of you? <laughs> yeah, they could lay eggs and babies in you or something. <laughs> And, and, and you might not know it until you're already on the trip, like that you, that you have someone on your crew who's like infected, like an in alien, you know, like something growing up out of them or something. And I'm just going to, I got to make the phantasoid lays eggs in you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what so what are the other enemies aside from phantasoid i mean i assume that like other people would probably yeah. be oh we well, gotta have zombies so there's gotta be zombies like just like a regular old zombie yeah typical is there, like, zombie. Something special about like a plasma apocalypse zombie um no they're pretty much zombies like you know what i mean like um so there's basically they are what i call plasma possessed but they're the dead so they're com they're completely plasma possessed they're thralls to uh the, the 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 red plasma that's descending from above which is represented by like cthulhu type god entities ancient ones right they're all thralls every single zombie that wakes up for the most part is just doing the bidding of the master which is coming into this world to destroy and kill and you know i mean change everything um but then there are the plasma possessed who are the living they're the ones who have their their souls have become overwhelmed by that same energy or that same energetic force um and um so plasma comes into this world but it branches out as it comes down to ground itself getting smaller and smaller as it gets down to the ground except for you know some anomalous branches that build up in a huge current that just zap the ground in these cosmic thunderbolts which are city destroyers you know what i mean uh Sodom and Gomorrah type stuff, but the weaker ones, little branches that come down will create little plasma streams like you see in Ghostbusters and stuff. And if a person is touched by one of those, say like, imagine it, it comes down and you know, it, it chases after people cause it's electricity and it's, fo it's following similar electrical charges or whatever. And it docks, boom, usually to the face. They, they portray stuff docking to people's faces and, you know, putting them under a spell or whatever. Uh, they can become plasma possessed and they're living. And um, man, there's a really good example movie about that. Oh, it's, um, it's a quiet, no, not a quiet place. What's that one with Sandra Bullock where she has the blindfold uh, bird box. Yeah. So there's a sequel to bird box part two, right? In, in part one, they show that there's these, they never showed the bad guys. They never show the phantasoids or the, it's really like, plasma and, and and other things too but anyways they never show the bad guys in part one um but they do show that there's these people who are possessed by whatever this entity is and they're they're perfect examples of these plasma possessed thralls who are living people who have just been overwhelmed by a stronger sp spiritual force or energetic force and they yeah see that guy holding their eyes open down there that dude is plasma possessed and he is working he's a thrall of this entity, this plasma, he goes around to the people who have not looked at it and he tries to force them to look into the light because the light is, it goes, you know, the eyeballs are the window to the soul and that's how they, you know, the plasma goes in and passes information through light or whatever. So he tries to get her to be plasma possessed too. You know what I mean? It's, it's trying to like recruit people. What, what's the difference between reanimated dead that's plasma possessed and like, you know, your, your friend that, was normal yesterday and now they're plasma possessed are they doing the same stuff is your friend stronger because similar were... similar things i would say that the the living how do i explain this um but do, do you still have ability to reason on your own or are you just a puppet slight yeah i would say it's more there's there's a slightly more okay so like zombies are 100 just controlled you know what i mean like all of them have a hive mind. They're all controlled. They all sense one another's, you know, what's going on and stuff. And they're, they all are predatory. Right. But the plasma possessed living humans still have like a remnant and, and they're working brains and stuff like that. that haven't, you know, been destroyed or anything like that. So it, it's, it's almost like living in a waking dream, right. Where they don't feel that they're plasma possessed. They don't feel that anything is wrong with them or anything, but they have an overwhelming urge to like, um, they, they see everything as being like anything that sets them off <laughs> will become evil to them and they will well, be completely if, justified by destroying that evil in any way they can. So in that what, respect, what if me, you were on a road trip 
and we're in this plasma apocalypse, right? And I'm like, Jay, dude, I think I think you're plasma possessed because you've been act like you've been doing these things. Yeah. And then you turn to me and you're like, nah, bro, I think you're plasma possessed. Yeah. <laughs> because of, like, like what, what would what would an objective outside observer do to be like, no, Jay's the one that was plasma possessed the whole time? Or is it like completely subjective? Um, I would say that there's strong indicators, you know, like that indicate that a person is plasma like what would possessed. be your litmus test if you walk into a room and there's two people you like know the spider-man meme and they're anger. pointing at each other anger is a huge one so um for example let's say you need to kill a zombie because it's threatening your life and it's coming into the room and it's clearly already eaten somebody or whatever and you kill that zombie it, it's not done maliciously it's done out of necessity you know what i mean you're using your rational mind i need to take that out before it takes me out but there's other people that will just be lose their ever living minds because they get so hyped up and angry about whatever's going on or they're angry with that person and they hold these grudges that turn into murderous intentions almost drastically and instantly you know that's that's more like um plasma possession for the living so that would that would be like hey let's think about this bro i i threw the banana peel out of the window but it's the apocalypse you know, there's not laws or anything, and you want to kill me because of that. You might be plasma possessed, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. I was that. just like, yeah, but it starts with a banana peel and it ends with polar bears dying. So <laughs> like, <laughs> I have to stab you now. Right. I'm sorry. It's basically a rage. Like, you know, you ever play like Dungeons and Dragons or like, you know, stuff like that when they go into a uh, rage yeah, like, or there's a rage spell. mode or, or whatever. Yeah, it's, that's what it is. That's totally what okay. it is. Okay. Uh, what else do we got? We got to have some methods? cults too. We got to have some cults people yeah. run into. Those are definitely. Are there any specific, or is it? Are we talking fictional cults, or is there like? I've got some in mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You got to what definitely. Else? We got some animals. Cults. Are they like weird? Because I, I assume that if we've got these phanazoids. Oh yeah. Is, is there like Fallout style, like dog phanazoids and stuff, or? You mean like a radioactive type? stuff well i guess yeah in fallout it's like radioactive but in this case right. it's like instead of radioactive it's like a demonic plasma thing yes so um animals also will be highly susceptible to being plasma possessed so okay. animals will um easily attack anybody you know what i mean like normally you have you ever like been walking in an area and there's one of those damn birds that like you know, thinks it's protecting its nest. So it'll swoop down. Or you ever see a video of like a bird swooping down on somebody? Yeah. Yeah. yeah imagine that. But all the birds in the block, which is like uh, so the movie birds. Yeah. It's birds, but it's all, it's, it's all animals. You gotta be super careful on, you know, not to piss off the animals or scare them because they're, they'll go into plasma rage mode or whatever. But is this Alfred all animals the birds or like all about that. certain ones that would be like have weaker in you know, general it applies to all of them either will always be anomalies you know what i mean because so it's cause like one you, of could, the... you could have your pet like let's say you have a german shepherd that's but that's what i was going to say because you know. my original idea on this because when i was thinking about like motorcycle versus sedan versus van i was like what if you roll up and you're like that would be the perfect addition to our party because this dude's like knows you know, yeah. tools and everything, yeah. but he comes with like six cats, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, and I was just wondering, like, maybe there could be like a pet mechanic here, but yeah, then it's totally. like, if the dude, so let's say that, you know, Jay comes along and he's got two dogs with him. Like are both of those dogs, the same amount of susceptible to being plasma apocalypse possessed or would like, and if one dog got it with the other dog, just inherently get it because they spend time together. Right. Or could you like weed it out? Like what, like how does that all play out? Right. I honestly, those would be the anomalies. So the, the rule would be all the animals are plasma possessed. Don't piss them off. Watch out. You know what I mean? The anomalies would be your, your personal pet that you know, who loves you and you have a bond, etc. cetera. Um, they will protect you. They'll be there for you, etc. However, because they're susceptible to being plasma possessed, they're going to be extremely loyal and extremely protective of you. You know what I mean? Like, so um, it, it would just depend on like the level of um, the level of the animal and how we, um, you know, how we code the animals. 
situation. So maybe there could. I'm just thinking again in game terms. There might be like a, like a say a zero to a hundred rating of like animal loyalty, and maybe like yeah. there's a sweet spot. Like seventy is a good sweet spot. If you've got a hundred, yeah. Then if I'm just like, hey Jay, you know, you want you want like some of these chips, and it just like attacks me. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Jugular. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so cults, uh, that's fun. Zombies, uh, the plasma possessed, both animals and um what about like government agents or like like the like a, the elite is you know does like uh, Rothschild helicopter just fly by and, and pick people out just because they can at this point? Um like what would what I would, would say, the richest people on the planet be doing? What would Elon Musk be doing during the plasma apocalypse? Right. I would I would say that it's we there could be scenarios where you could run into them, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't say they're purposefully like, you know, flying around trying to just murder people just because they Why can. Why not? I mean we can make it like that, but I just I I don't no, see I that. mean in your in your mind, why wouldn't like Well, because believe- they're they're the ones in the know. So they're the ones who are like those people are all going to die anyway. Like we are right now we're in safety mode. We're in self-preservation mode and killing us is not their self-preservation. They know nature will kill most of us anyway. So they're not really, really worried about that. They're way focused on their bunkers, the ones that are staying or their rocket ships, the ones that are planning on blasting off and trying to leave or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they're, I mean, well, hear hear me out the devil's advocate. If I'm like, or Musk or whatever, fill in the blank, Mark Cuban, if I've got the resources, I'm not personally stressing out over any of this crap because I've got people to stress out about it for me and to like make sure everything's so. And if you know, if I'm Mark Cuban in this case, all I'm stressed out about if they've got like the ketchup flavored potato chips from Canada stock <laughs> in my little mini fridge while I play, you know, PS6 advance release, while I know outside, you know, my bunker people are like dying and getting fried and getting attacked by zombies but right me like since i've got the resources like i like i'm basically in an underground cruise ship at a certain point no right i like this as like a little side story i think that this has some fun potential so for example you could stumble upon you know uh some rich dudes you know cave dwelling or bunker or whatever it is that they have or whatever and um you know, stumble up upon like some stuff that makes you not like that person. And so you, you have like decisions that you can make, you know, <laughs> like, what do you want to do with this person? Have you ever played the, um, the telltale walking dead s- series? Uh, yeah, I think I have it on VR actually. We just got it. I think it's the walking dead. It's, uh, this, this particular one. Yeah, you start out with. Oh no, I don't have that one, girl. No, no, no. This is the ultimate homework, bro. If if like, because this is kind of describing, although it's done in much more of like a Telltale style. I don't know if you've ever played a Telltale game before. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, dude, I highly, highly recommend this game in particular. It's just yeah, it's just called Walking Dead Telltale, and it it kind of has some of this where like guides you, but um, you join like a group. And maybe someone pisses you off or like they just got the wrong attitude. And like later on in the game, like they're getting attacked by a zombie and it's like save Jeff or like, right. You know, yes. get, get that corn out of your teeth. <laughs> I love like, this. Yes. I yeah. love this idea. Okay. So that reminds me of a game called fable. Do you ever hear that one? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that concept that you can, you know, make your guy lean more towards evil or more towards good because that's an option in the apocalypse as well. If you want to be good or bad, that's always fun to, you know, role play being the bad guy or the good guy. Um, and so there could be decisions that you make that every decision will give points to your goodness and purity or whatever your, your saintliness. I don't know. Um, oh, or a, your evil. Another... And, and oh. both of those will have certain, um, certain, um, you know, benefits, right? So like, for example, the plasma that comes down that possesses people is more inclined, more attracted to evil. It's that's it's the uh, the angels of God that come down and you know the angel of death or whatever, and it looks for it's attracted to that energy signature which is akin to evil. So you have to be more caref- careful about being plasma possessed. The more your evil is amped up, 
You know what I mean? Have you ever, ever seen this game, Infamous, for PS3? No, no, no. I've never heard of that. So, one. dude, this this is that. The whole mechanic of the game is that you've got these abilities, right? Um, but if you're, like, good, then it starts leaning towards, like, this blue energy. And it has its own wow. set <laughs> of, like, things that it's good at. But if you start being a dick to everyone, you get this, like, red energy. Yep. Um, and it's, like, 100% reliant. But, like, if you go for the red path, now you're a dick all the time. And people are, like, coming after you. And if you go in this blue energy, it might yes. be weaker. But people are like on your side more often than not. I mean, I'm, I'm oversimplifying that, but right. that's the whole premise of, of this entire game. And it, yes. that's like this whole morality meter thing that like directly affects that. your special abilities. Yeah, we should definitely have that. So like uh, a, a benefit, let's say, you know, let's say you chose an evil path, right? So you got to really watch out for like being plasma possessed. Look out for streamers. Make sure they don't dock with you. Or whatever however when you come upon these cults or whatever maybe there's the option to like take over a cult or you know like um you know recruit people or who knows i don't know Dude, maybe we should just do a like a playthrough of the walking dead game together at some point okay like we just stream it on i don't know is that where all the kids do are they doing twitch or youtube i don't know yeah i don't know so yeah dude that would be that would be fun because it would be research right like this is work now like we should be we're writing all this off as tax benefits because we're on the clock yeah but we just totally. play through the game because and figure out like i like this decision like you know outside of playing the game think of it as if you were going to remake it or take some of the mechanics and the storylines yes. and how you would improve it and what parts you like and don't i love it all right, all right. So let's just see if there's anything. We're wrap, We're coming up on like an hour and a half here. We'll keep talking afterwards, but maybe uh, if there's like a logical conclusion for some of this, we've got maybe a, a quick recap. Is that yeah? Here, we'll, that we'll do we'll, yeah. We'll do some decisions that have kind of been made. So we'll say recap. So Oregon Oregon Trail foul game check. Um. NES 8-bit, maybe 16-bit style check. Um, and then is there a level of profanity or violence or gore or anything like that? Like, is this, yeah. is this a D for everyone? Is this like a 13 and up? Nah, I would say, you know, maybe like uh, somewhere between PG and R. You know what I mean? In what way? Are we, are we seeing nipples? uh no nah, i wouldn't go that far <laughs> okay but we're seeing blood yeah you see blood okay. whatever like carnage blood, stuff like that but no but no like no illuminati nipples, orgies underground brownie I mean. face oh are we going to <laughs> sad there face. we go no nipples Aww. that's okay that, that'll I mean, be that, the dlc that's the yes, patreon exactly totally extension. yes you have a freaking <laughs> i mean you could hot go crazy pod. with the dlcs for sure <laughs> And I know okay, you will uh, too. <laughs> so um I know I know that there's probably a version where like the answer to this question is like forever, right? But but really, what would be like the target gameplay length for this? And and to explain, there's something like in the back of my head to try and describe it briefly. There's like roguelike games. You know what a roguelike game is? No. So like a roguelike game is a game that's so hard that they expect that you're going to be dying all the time frequently. Kind of like the OG Oregon Trail. Um, like unless you do exactly what you're doing. Like everyone's dying. You're not making it to Oregon. Lesson learned, right? And then there's the anomaly okay. where you make it. Um, okay. But the, the play length of Oregon Trail was a very set thing. Like it, it maybe took 40 minutes max, I think. We could probably Google it. But um, they're like there's no such thing in them i'm aware of of like an eight hour oregon trail game like they all right. fall within yeah you either die within 15 minutes or you make it all the way there and it takes you maybe a half hour so is is that something sure. similar to this playthrough or is this just like an open-ended thing that can last as as long as you want it to i would like my, it to I'll, be so that people can come table. back to it you know what i mean well, like maybe a save or I don't know, but like I want right, right. To... But I mean, like so let's say you sat down and you just kept you kept playing it and engaging with it, and right, without stopping, and walk away, right. Um, in my mind, like a twenty-minute gameplay with replayability, so that it's like, oh man, I died, or oh, I made it, but I want to try it again this way. But every one yeah. of those playthroughs is essentially like 15, 20 minutes max. I like that. I think twenty is good. Okay. 
It's about like a, a round of Fortnite. And this one, without getting into the weeds on this aspect, this is where we would probably break down like, okay, if it's Oregon Trail style, mm -hmm. they've got these certain screens, right? So you've got the, you're in a city and you yeah. pick where in the city you want to go and who to talk to. That's part of it. Yeah. Um, and then you've got like the buying supplies, trading and selling. Mm -hmm. Then you've got like a recruiting sort of aspect to it. And then you're either traveling, resting, or then doing some sort of activity in the OG one it was hunting. And then they yeah. made like other uh, versions after that where like you could do additional things and not just kill animals because people were yes. crying I think there that. should also be events as well. So like um, natural events, we'll say, you know, or, or natural just just events that happen like like an earthquake is an event you know what i mean um in, in this case is is an earthquake similar to like timmy got dysentery or is that a separate thing you mean like uh just like a random event yeah well like so like yeah like the event would be sally got bitten by a snake and it just happened like you had no control over it and you don't do anything to respond to it aside from oh crap now sally's gonna die or maybe try and buy her medicine but i'm assuming that there might be something more detailed where it's like um an earthquake happens maybe that that changes where you plan on going so if yeah, you're going totally. towards the city by a fault line maybe you don't do that anymore i don't know yes or like for example like um let's say that there's an earthquake that actually causes liquefaction and the whole ground becomes swampy and muddy now you can't take that car now you have to find another route or another way to continue on uh, because you're in like a swamp world environment that, you know, a car is not going to be able to, depending on your vehicle, I guess, and, you know, how swampy it would be or whatever. Um, there could be like a, an event like a, a nitrous oxide gas cloud that's released and, you know, passes through or whatever. Like, <laughs> you're like we're just going to stay here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we're setting up camp. I don't know why. I got a good <laughs> feeling about this place. <laughs> right. What do you do? Tell a joke? or <laughs> <laughs> laugh uncontrollably you just keep clicking it yes i like that um okay so so what is the ultimate win condition like you made it you played 20 minutes you got yeah. there and you got the top score like what what happens in that kind of scenario um i i see three endings is is me like the the big end picture is um the three final paths in the choose your own adventure um all of them are beneficial all of them are good so one is that you stay in paradise earthly terrestrial at the center of the world in hyperborea or wherever you want to call it and um and you decide to stay there and it's paradise you have regenerative regenerative cells and you have the fountain of youth that you live by and stuff like that another one um, see if, if you choose that one, then you're already, well, on you the have to get first. there first. Right. Yeah, so I yeah, just yeah. assumed that. Right. Totally. So, 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 so I guess finding paradise would be the win condition. Then it's just up to you if you click on stay forever or not. Yeah. You could go down into the earth, into, you know, the, the hollow earth or whatever you could go up and you can leave into other worlds. If you go up, you have the choice of going to alternate earths, which is basically like time travel because they're exact replicas of earth. But you know, different events have taken place like sliders type stuff, whatever. So that's when you get to actually choose your world that you go into next or whatever. Um, if you stay, then you're just choosing that same world. It should accept you're in paradise or you go down into like this wonderland that's down inside of the earth. And, you know, like there's different benefits to all of them or whatever. And it would be like, you know, each one of those would have its own little ending story scene or whatever. Like when you beat the game in street fighter or something like you get like different, I, um, I'm I'm just thinking out loud here, but so let's say yeah. you win and, the game and you decide to stay in paradise. Maybe that unlocks like a new yes. technology or a new thing. So the next yeah. time you play the game, you've got that thing. But yes. if you picked unlock alternate earth, well, now when you go to play again, you can pick that alternate earth. Yes. And play around that way. Yes. Totally fun. And also every single time across the board, once you actually make it to paradise, uh, then they let you know like uh oh hey did you take the shortcut to get here or did you take the long way and you're like what shortcut and then they let you know about that shortcut you could have took at the very beginning 
and how you know like then but they don't tell you exactly how to do it so it's kind of a mystery and you have to you're like man i want to play the game all over but i want to see what i can do in the beginning to get straight to the end and then that leads you to those three options so you skip the whole surviving the apocalypse and now that leads you into like dlc options or you know i don't know the language for it or whatever but you go straight to because you already you know you've already been through all the different well that's when that's when the nipples come out yeah (laughs) oh yeah what what would be the if you go down into the earth what would be the benefit there so let's say you stay in paradise you develop some cool thing um to play on the next time uh unlock alternate earth you play on the alternate earth but then if you go down what would be the thing you get for that um well Are there more people going down there? yes so the the inner earth would open up into like um its own type of uh science fiction fantasy type of paradise utopia that also but also has you know monsters and bad elements and stuff like that too but if you continue down eventually if you go down farther enough i mean far enough the caverns open up and you're um the caverns open up and then you 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 get the same option as you had if you went up so the caverns would open up and um this is hard to explain because i have to like draw a picture of it you know because it has to do with my how i see the cosmology of the world and stuff um but think of like our world is being um um i don't know a mushroom i guess or a tree or something you know like going down would be like going into the root systems or the caves that go down but eventually those lead out just like going up leads out so no matter what you're going to have the option of you get to paradise you know you stay in paradise or whatever um you go down into the earth and then you have these fantasy kind of adventures or whatever with gigantic beings and giants and and stuff like that um but you you continue on through the earth all the way downwards and then you it's kind of like you come out the other side like up is down and down is up they're the same thing basically so you can go down into the earth and you can reach other worlds too or you can go up out of ours and still reach alternate earths and stuff like that i'm thinking maybe there's two technology tracks so maybe for lack of a better um yeah terms maybe there's like celestial technology and then like like fantastical technology Yes, I love that. And also, like, let's say you choose to go down, um, there will be some sort of like adversary that you have to get through who's guarding the gates into those other worlds, like reptilians or, you know what I mean? Like, um, uh, the Ubermen or I don't know. Yeah, I mean, in the hero's journey, right? This is the, the moment of, or the, the crossing the threshold, which is like the moment of no return where it's like, you you fought the guys to get through the gate. Now it's like you're in it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yes. Okay. 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 So so we've got. I think it's pretty solid. And then I can uh, surmise what all the lose conditions are. Like you die. That's essentially like <laughs> everyone is you die. Um, <laughs> oh, so, I want to. I want to also include one more aspect too. What? Is a period of no death. So there'll be a a period. Let's say there's like a week. A week of no dying. So if you do get hurt or injured or whatever, it's just, it's hellish torture. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you have a fantasoid impregnate you with its babies or whatever, you're staying alive. They're not dying when they, when they burst out. What if, what if, uh, I like grind you up through like a a hamburger grinder and then cook you and eat you at what, like at some point you die. Okay. Yes. Then you would die. Yes. So for example, like it, it, it would have to be an extreme death. So basically your spinal cord would have to be snapped. Your brain would have to be, you know, smushed or something like that to, to stop that electrical conduit within your body from working. So that's why you get it, like shoot a zombie in the head, like headshots and stuff like that. Like that's an extreme way. Like otherwise, the zombie's not going to die. I mean, there's there's a ship of Theseus argument here too. Of like, okay, if I remove one single brain cell, does that kill you? What if I remove ten? What if I remove ten thousand? Like, at what is it? Is it the ten thousand right. and one <laughs> that kills it? Yeah. Right. I don't know. We could just. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. That's not <laughs> the point of the game is to figure that part out. 
Okay, so what would you, th- if let's say that this is phase one, right? The phase one is just all text and you just click around on cities and that's it. Okay. Um, the only thing you can do is pick a car and pick Alice and Bob. So phase two to get you really jazzed, would what, what would it include? Would it just be more options? Would it be some graphics and visuals? Um, and if it were graphics and visuals, what specifically? Like what would be the first big screen that would get you excited to see? Where like wherever they chose to to begin. Okay, so let's say they pick they pick Manhattan. Maybe we flesh out um like all the different backgrounds for what Manhattan might look like. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so so maybe we we do this again uh and continue this and we'll just generate some everything that we would need for Manhattan. And then I don't know if, if there's a crossover. We, we uh, play some of that walking dead game or if that's another thing, but we'll figure that okay. out. That sounds good. All right. Well, me and Jay are going to keep talking shop behind the scenes, but for everyone else, uh, go, go kick rocks. No, but seriously, we think we thank you for watching this, watch our little journey. Hopefully like, I mean, ideally right in like a year or two from now, there's this badass game called the plasma apocalypse and it's fun to play and then someone's like i wonder how they made this or where did this come from and then this video comes up and someone's watching this in the future from now so future person that maybe is playing this game if it exists thank you uh or maybe if this game never got finished sorry we tried (laughs) (laughs) uh all right uh and let me here I'll, i'll kick us out with i've only got one commercial loaded so here it is love you guys They said it was forbidden. They said it was dangerous. They were right. Introducing the paranoid American homunculus owner's manual. Dive into the arcane, into the hidden corners of the occult. This isn't just a comic. It's a hidden tome of supernatural power. All original artwork illustrating the groundbreaking research of Juan Ayala, one of the only living homunculologists of our time. Learn how to summon your own homunculus, an enigma wrapped in the fabric of reality itself, their power at your fingertips, their existence, your secret. Explore the mysteries of the Aristotelian, the spiritual, the Paracelsian, the Crowleyan homunculus, ancient knowledge lost to time, now unearthed in this forbidden tale. This comic book holds truths not meant for the light of day, knowledge that was buried, feared, and shunned. Are you ready to uncover the hidden, the paranoid American homunculus owner's manual, not for the faint of heart? Available now from Paranoid American. Get your copy at tjojp.com or paranoidamerican.com today.